Welcome, I'm Tom Laux, your host for Community Connections, our first episode, which is geared towards local topics that mean most to you right here in Southwood County. On tap for today's program, we're going to pay a visit to see our furry friends at the Southwood County Humane Society. Visit with our city clerk, Shane Blazer. He gives out important election information. We sit down and talk with Laura Nelson from the CVB about hiking and biking trails in the area. We get to know the Lowell Center coordinator a bit better. We're going to talk about abuse and why it's such an issue in our society and what you can expect to see on next month on RCCA. So please stay tuned and enjoy the program after this a brief announcement by our city clerk, Shane Blazer. Hello, my name is Shane Blazer and I'm the city clerk for the city of Wisconsin Rapids. This year's spring nonpartisan elections will be held on April 2nd. There are two contested automatic seats in the city of Wisconsin Rapids for Common Council. Scott Kellogg and Paula Reeves are running for District 3, and Jim Stack and Kelly Bodet are running for District 7. The polling locations in the city of Wisconsin Rapids are at Mead School, Howe School, and Grove School. In-person voting will begin at the city clerk's office in the city of Wisconsin Rapids from March 18th through March 29th from 8 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. We're here at the Southwood County Humane Society in Grand Rapids and today we're going to talk about volunteering and why it's important to the shelter. We're going to go inside and actually see the volunteers at work, talk to a few of them, and also talk to our executive director, Bridget Sheraton. So come on in. Well, we're here with Bridget Sheraton, the executive director here at the Southwood County Humane Society. And Bridget, let's talk about volunteerism and why it's so important to this shelter. Absolutely. We have a variety of animals that we're taking care of on a daily basis. Anywhere is between 140 cats, 30 dogs, and our, our volunteers are very important in helping us care for those animals. Uh, if we had to do it just with our staff, we would be looking at um, two to three times our budget, uh, which and during these times is very challenging, so we rely on volunteers to help us socialize with the animals. Well, we're out here today and there's a lot of volunteers going around and moving around here. Wednesday is your day off mm -hmm. and it's a pretty good day for cleaning and getting Absolutely. things done. If you want to become a volunteer, how does that happen? Volunteering at the Humane Society is very easy to do. We have a simple application form that people can fill out. It just allows us to gather their contact information and emergency contact in case an accident were to happen. It allows us to look at what their needs are, what they would like to do, and their scheduling. Once we have that complete, uh, the volunteer is welcome to come in any time that it works with their schedule. We'd love to have people come in and not feel constrained to have to abide by a certain time frame or a certain day of the week. So whenever they're free, whether it be they have a half an hour or a couple of hours, we can adjust accordingly and have needs to meet that. Alrighty, do you welcome any ages? Is there any kind of supervision that needs to be done? Our volunteers do have to be 16 in order to be out here by themselves, um, but if they're under that age, we just ask that a parent is here. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great family opportunity as well to come out and socialize with the cats or take a dog for a walk, um, and we have opportunities sure. for families or singles. Well, let's just talk about uh, some of those opportunities. Again, walking dogs mm -hmm. is very important, and mm -hmm. they want to get out, they can't sit in their kennels sure. all the time. Sure. What other things are there to do? I mean, I know the litter boxes have to be cleaned Absolutely. for the cats. Sure. Let's just go through a few of those things that maybe people would be interested in doing. Sure. So a lot of our big cleaning takes place in the morning um, and that's where we need a lot of our help for volunteers. Uh, we are in the cat room, all of the food and litter has changed, they're given new bedding and so each cat is taken out of their kennel um, and it's sanitized and we have volunteers that help us do that so that's part of the morning cleaning. Uh, we also in the afternoon then are maintaining the clean cleanliness. Um, people can take cats out and groom them. Mm -hmm. um, we also have needs we talked about in the dog room, um, but we also have things like office work uh, in our kitchen area. Sure. We're doing laundry pretty much around the clock, um, and we're doing the dishes and sanitizing properly, so those are some needs as well. well let's talk about numbers here at the mm -hmm. Southwood County Humane Society of Volunteers. How many do you have? We have a huge volunteer base. Uh, it's pretty interesting once we look at tracking. Um, it's definitely a seasonal type thing. Um, we have people that love to come out in the summer when it's nice out and walk the dogs. Uh, we love to have people, and we see a lot of people coming out in the winter to spend more time with the cats. So it's it's quite a dynamic. Uh, we, on any given basis, you know, we have about five to ten volunteers per day uh, that are consistent, dedicated volunteers. Um, and so you know, we we adjust that way. Well, you came to the shelter here a few years back now already. Yeah. Uh, uh, how do you uh, 
go get volunteers? How do you go find them out in the community? Do they come to you or do, they, do you have to come to them? Sure. We have a lot of people that are coming to us interested in volunteering. A lot of people that are interested in walking dogs or socializing with the cats. If there's a need that we have for maybe a specific niche, mm -hmm. a lot of times we turn around and go out into the community through our local media, mm -hmm. um, through the United Way's Volunteer Center, um, and through our networks of the Friends Group as well to fill those gaps. Alrighty. Well, I appreciate that telling us a lot about the volunteers and we're going to actually interview here a volunteer and uh, see what they have to say about volunteering here at the shelter. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. At the shelter here with Emma, a uh, volunteer here at the, at the shelter and uh, tell me why volunteering is so important to you. Um, volunteering is important to me because I really love the animals and I don't like to see them in in an environment where they're not being socialized with people. So it's really important for me to come out and help out however the, the Humane Society needs me. Uh, when do you come by? Do you come by during the day or the um, night? I come whenever it's convenient for me. I do it mostly after school. I do come in sometimes on weekends sure. and work the front desk. So, Do you get a chance to work with the cats and the dogs? Yes, I do. Um, in the mornings, I do come to clean sometimes. So like in the morning, I'm working with the cats. Sometimes if they need me in the dog room, I work in the dog room with them. So I mean, a lot of times you just got to come here, feed the cats, but there's always a lot of work involved too. And it's mm -hmm. not just always fun. I mean, you got to clean the cat boxes. Right. It's not always a lot of fun, but it has to be done. Right. And it is, it is fun <laughs> um, when the cats are getting along, but it is fun because even if it is work, you still get to pet cats all day. Like who doesn't want to do that? Right. So. Yeah, and these cats are a lot of fun. I can see this one wants to come home. It's yeah. being a lot of playful. So, well, thanks for uh, coming by, telling me about your story with volunteering here at the shelter. Okay, you're welcome. Keep jobs in the heart of Wisconsin. Buy local. We're here back in the studio and I'm going to talk about the trails here in Southwood County and I'm sitting here with Laura Nelson of the CVB. And Laura, let's talk about which trails are out there, what kinds there are for people. Spring is just around the corner. I can't wait till that happens. And me neither. Get rid of the winter. Um, but Laura, what kind of trails are out there here for the outdoor enthusiast? Well, actually, here in Wisconsin Rapids, we are known for our trails, which is really cool. Um, we've got we've got biking trails, we've got hiking trails. Of course, the spring rolls around; those are really you know awesome. We've got ATV trails. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got the gorgeous Wisconsin River, which you know we have a lovely trail system going along there, which is fantastic. And then snowmobile trails, of course, as well. Oh, definitely. Well, it's February. We're taping this. It's going to be airing here in March. Okay. Um, I would assume the snowmobile trails might be closed at that time, but we might get a dumping of snow. You never know. It's Wisconsin, yep. right? So there's great snowmobile trails here. And again, there are uh, trails in NEPCO uh, mm -hmm. for the cross-country skiers. There is a little bit of a cost, and I know there's a sign down there for mm -hmm. people to see, and a little drop box uh, for them to do a day pass, I believe. I do believe so too, yes. I haven't gotten a chance. I'm not coordinated enough to uh, do cross-country skiing, nor am I uh, athletically toned enough. But you know what, for those sure. that are, bless their hearts. You right? bet. Yeah. Well, these trails are basically maintained by our county park system. We mm -hmm. also have some trails here, right here in the city of Wisconsin Rapids, uh, ones right along the river here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just talk about a little bit about uh, the trails and, and uh, just who maintains them and if they people want to know a little bit more who they would call. Well, sure, sure. Um, as you mentioned, the ones here within the city, uh, at, at the river walks, the Heritage River walks, and the Wisconsin River Trail System, that's maintained by the city. And then, of course, our awesome county park system uh, with Southwood County Park, Nepco Lake Park, et cetera. Um, those are maintained by the uh, Wood County um, Parks and Forestry Department. And so if you want more information on that, uh, we actually have our annual visitor's guide, the Wisconsin Rapids mm -hmm. Area Visitor's Guide. So you can stop by our visitor center uh, to gather that information. Otherwise, they're all over the place. You know, you've right. probably seen them all throughout town. Um, also our website, mm -hmm. uh, visitwisrapids.com, has the exact same information, but more detailed information is found on the Wood County Parks website. And that's all the, the mm -hmm. up-to-date information. They update it very often, you know, okay. saying what's open, what's closed, what's being maintained, 
need, et cetera. Right. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to visit, they're welcome to give uh, your convention center a call. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd be glad to help them show where to go. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of stuff for people to come that might not be from the area. Mm -hmm. Say uh, you're coming into town from out west, uh, mm -hmm. uh, motorhome, bikes on there coming this summer. Um, mm -hmm. You'll be able to point them in the right direction or they can go to your website, find those. Uh, there's a great map I see in our in your plant mm -hmm. foot here. Uh, that'll help uh, people know where to go. Absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand how much real estate we have here in comparison to other areas as far as our park system goes and our trail system goes. And, and not to mention, you mentioned people coming from out of state, out right. of the area. It's so fantastic to hear what those people have to say because sometimes we take it for granted having it in our backyard. Exactly. Well, let's talk about uh, any expansion to any of the trails. Uh, Portage County has a great system of trails over there. They, they have do. the Green Circle Trail that goes around their community and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything like that's going to happen here in the city of Wisconsin Rapids? Well, I know I've heard people talking about it. Obviously, it would be ideal. We've got fantastic trails that mm -hmm. head out towards that way through Grand Rapids and such. I don't know. I'm not a particular authority mm -hmm. on that. I don't have the inside track. Wish I did. But um, but I you know I hope that talk turns into a reality someday. I'm not sure if sure. there's funds set aside or not, but that would certainly uh, add a lot of accreditation to our trail system and a lot more um, promotion you know possibilities right. as well. And, uh, and through your, your department, I'm sure you're putting a lot of promotion out of different things. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe the ski show that's coming up here in mm -hmm. July, mm -hmm. there is the trail around Wazicha, so bring mm -hmm. your bikes. There's more Absolutely. than just the skiing there. Absolutely, and it's, it's really nice to see those trails utilized. And oftentimes it takes an outsider to see the value mm -hmm. in it. Like I was saying before, you know, people who have it here in their own backyard, it would be great to have more people out there um, and, and advocating for our trail system and, and making sure that it's well used. Uh, one of the, the neatest things about it is that, you know, when you're in a larger city or, or one that has maybe a smaller trail system, you always have to kind of bob and weave around people. It's, yep. it's difficult to, to really kind of traffic your way through that. If you're biking, you have to watch out for the runners and the walkers and so on. Well, we don't have that problem. It would be a great problem to have. That would mean people would be getting very active and utilizing everything at mm -hmm. our fingertips. But, you know, actually, there's many times on a nice day you can have the trail just about to yourself. Yeah, pretty much. And this uh, Wisconsin River we have just even right out here, our studio, mm -hmm. you know, that trail by the city, it goes all the way into Portage, uh, not Portage County, but uh, Port Edwards right. uh, through Nakusa. And mm -hmm. it's a great trip. Uh, follow the railroad track. Mm -hmm. uh, they maintain that now in the winter. So. Right. Uh, you know, you can get out there now, uh, unless you want to, you just got to bund bundle up. Well, exactly. There's that, and then also fall time is a great time to utilize that trail if you think about it. Um, one of our other uh, greatest assets is the cranberry country, right? Yep. Imagine, you know, there's not a specific trail that we've named or dubbed, but if uh, you get your bike out there, it's the open road, yep. it's gorgeous, crisp air, and if you take that river trail mm -hmm. uh, right over through Port Edwards, you hook right up with cranberry country, it, it doesn't. It doesn't get prettier right. than that. Well, we kind of get a little bit, uh, kind of get a little off track. That sure. motorcycle ride, you know, is right. similar to you know that come for Cranberry mm -hmm. Country. But wouldn't that be neat to establish a one of the hiking or biking trails, an actual trail all the way around to the Cranberry Marshes? Yes, absolutely. It would be great. The Bikes to Bogs yeah. has established that, and that's what they do yep. all the time. And you know, it's a different kind of biking. It is. But you know, they have a blast, and, and it's bet. great. It brings people to the area, which yep. of course we love. Uh, but yeah, that would be fantastic. I know we have the Cranberry highway so somebody could take that mm -hmm. and utilize that that's also on our website and in our visitors guide but if somebody were to take the cranberry highway and decide to bike it yep. you know as a group or by themselves um, you know granted it's it's a little ways but if if you're an avid biker it would mm -hmm. be Gorgeous. Well, all these trails uh, come at a price, mm -hmm. and our taxpayers help mm -hmm. pay that, I believe. Is mm -hmm. that right? I do believe so. When it's maintained by yep. cities or counties, right. um, you know, that's how they're funded. Uh, uh, uh. So it's the good people that live there, the good residents, right. and um, in some cases, the the visitors end up contributing. But for the most part, right. it's the it's the residents. Residents. So mm -hmm. yeah, but we want to make sure we have a great. Uh, system of parks and, and trails for these people to come and uh, visit Wisconsin Rapids or our area towns here. Absolutely. So. I mean, what a, what a great thing that we have here. And if we just can promote it not only through yep. the normal avenues that we have, but having everybody here be an advocate for it yep. and use it and be able to speak to somebody when they say, so I'm new to the area, so I'm here visiting, what's there to do? Right. Uh, to have that personal experience to say, oh my gosh, Southwood County Park, check out the trail system there. Check, you know, check right. out Nepco Lake Park, it's breathtaking. We've got a gorgeous, mm -hmm. um, you know, serene lake where you can swim, bike, et cetera. Right. I mean, we need to become our own, exactly. our, you know, our own advocates for the right. area. There are a lot of trails that a lot 
of people don't know. I know even, we'll go back to that NEPCO. I know that if mm -hmm. you just kind of get off the, the road that kind of goes, there's a trail that goes all the way back in the woods. And mm -hmm. It's a hiking trail. And sure. a lot of people just don't know about it. So mm -hmm. there's a tip to our, our viewers here mm -hmm. to see if the, uh, they want to go and go hiking. There's a great place to get bird shots of mm -hmm. cameras, you name it. So oh, wildlife. It, that opens yep, up a whole different yep, aspect of things, yep, but yes. It, it's, a, it's a way to relax. I, mm -hmm. As a, being a news photographer, I found myself going on those trails all the time. I was mm -hmm. able to get a lot of different kind of pictures. So it's just a, a good way to get away from the rustle and bustle of, of everyday life. Right on, right on. And we do have our city and our county exactly. uh, park system to thank for that yep. and the residents here for, for contributing. And, and we just have to remember to have an active role and not only maintaining what we have, but <laughs> trying to expand and trying to make yep. the best out of it. Yep. Well, any last minute thoughts on the trails or where they can get information uh, if they just tuned in here? Uh, well, just to check our website, visit wisrapids.com. That has all of our information or find our annual visitor's guide. We've got our brand new one coming out any day now, which is fantastic, but it's in the old one or the new one. Um, the you know, park system and the trails haven't changed sure. since last year, or the Wood County Parks website. That definitely has a lot of up-to-date information um, for those who may be interested in, in what trails are opening and closing at what particular you know times. That has all that information. Yep, and your website has a lot of new things on there, including mm -hmm. video of, of neat mm -hmm. things that are around the area for people to see, including yep. our trails. So. Exactly, and courtesy of the talented staff, Thank you very much. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you for coming by. I appreciate that. You bet. Thank you. All righty. And please stay tuned for this short announcement. Stay tuned into River City's Community Access for local programming from staff and volunteers. Keep a lookout for the following programs. A League of Women Voters Forum is going to be live on the 20th of March starting at 6 p.m. Wisconsin Rapids City Council meeting live on the 19th at 6 p.m. Wisconsin Rapids Mayor Zach Vruink and County Board Chairman Lance Plimo will be on WFHR. There are also many volunteer programs that include concerts from both Wisconsin Rapids public schools and Catholic schools. Several local churches produce weekly and sporting events, along with much more. So please stay tuned and watch for a weekly schedule in the local newspapers or on WRPEG.org. Hi, my name is Joan Kranig. I'm the program coordinator at the Lowell Center. I've been here for about a year and I've met many wonderful seniors. Each day at the Lowell Center, my goal is to give away free hugs, socialize with the seniors, and provide fun activities for them from each day to day. I've been married to my husband, Ken, for 18 years. We have two children, Alexa and Sam, and our newest addition is Buster, our Pomeranian dog. As a family, we love to go four-wheeling and camping. My own hobbies include knitting, crafting cards, and spending time outdoors. Welcome and thank you for joining us here on Community Connections. I have here in the studio uh, Gretchen Konopecki from the Family Center and I also have Chia Lowe from the Family Center and we're going to talk about abuse and why it's so prevalent here in our society. So I'm going to ask uh, Chia here and what kind of abuse forms are out there in our society and in, in, in the entire world. Um, I think when it comes to domestic violence, people often think of physical abuse, the hitting, the shutting, just shoving, the punching, but um, there's mm -hmm. actually a lot of types of abuse out there, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, stalking, um, financial abuse, sexual abuse, and one thing that we have been seeing a lot more is digital abuse, um, that's through texting, Facebook messaging, and uh, media abuse. What can be done to help this kind of abuse out there? Um, if, if you are a victim, if you are getting abuse in any of these categories, seek someone you trust. Go and um, talk to someone you trust or come and see one of us at the Family Center. Well, Gretchen, you're over at the Family Center. This is open for people that have abuse, uh, generally women. Right. Um, can they come anytime? Anytime. The shelter, we have a shelter that's really for women and children mm -hmm. and pets. You can bring your pets. But we have a lot of outreach services, and there's somebody available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What kind of people do you see come in, uh, abuse cases? Are, are there... It's a range of people. Mm -hmm. they're, I mean, there are victims from every social class, every mm -hmm. race, base, ethnicity, every background. Sure. background, and ages, All too. ages, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can see, um, we, if, if you're a victim coming and seeking shelter, um, you have to be over 18. 
um, if you're a woman. And then we do have guys that will call mm -hmm. on that um, are victim. And we do not serve guys up in shelter, but we'll refer them to a hotel or a motel, and then we'll pay for that. You know, you see this kind of abuse. How does it play a toll on you, you guys itself at the shelter? You see it coming. How do you how do you deal with that? Personal. Well, I don't do. I do more communications right. and PR, so I'm not direct service. Sure. So, Chia, how do you? Uh, we there are seven of us that are direct service right. staff, and it just um, relying on each other and right. um, knowing that. Um, it's a close team. We're there for close meet teamwork. Yeah, we um, assess the ca do case management um, once a week, and we mm -hmm. do um, communication where email right. or keep a communication log. But like you said here at the beginning of our show, here we were talking about more abuses. You know, people think of sh hitting, shoving, bullying, that kind of. That's all a part of abuse, I guess. It's very. It is prevalent in our society. Is how how do you get how do we get rid of it? I think education. Education and. Um, yeah, it all goes back to education and, and knowing. And that's why I don't think that it's necessarily more prevalent now. I think okay. we just know more about it. It's getting True. more recognition. Especially with social media out right. there. I mean, it's exactly. just it's just like media uh, means media is out there no matter what. I mean, a lot of people might think, I'll get off track here, all the storms and all this has been, it's been happening for umpteen mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Generations we, after generations. We just didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. And now with abuse, you're here hearing so many kinds. But it's starting as little as... Uh, right when you're born. And it's really a cycle. So children who are in abusive homes are more likely to be abusers. So that's why education sure. is a big part of our mission. Do outreach to youth mm -hmm. and just to educate, to try to break that cycle. And I think one of the biggest pieces is letting them know that they're not alone, that there are right. people like us out here in the community that um, is willing to walk with them on this sure. journey and no, uh, there's no fee to the services. Right. So if you want to, you need help with a restraining order mm -hmm. or a legal assistant, um, come and see one of us and we'll help you. A lot of people though don't know what abuse is. I mean, there's like if we say we talk about verbal abuse, it happens a ton. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I guess, it can people even, some people don't even know they're really getting abused. I mean, from, you're being abused and how, do you, how, do, how can someone really know that's happening to them? What I often tell my clients is if um, you don't feel safe. Okay. If you feel like you're being undermined sure. or if you don't feel safe. Because uh, as you mentioned, like verbally abuse, it could be emotion like verbally abuse usually leads to emotional abuse and telling someone that they're stupid over and over or that right. um, they can't do anything right or that they're nobody. They get so used to it, that's just normal. That's how, that's how it is. It is. Well, I mean, I, I don't, you know, you think back into the, the 50s and the 60s, you know, the wife didn't go to work. Mm -hmm. They stayed at home. They were the ones that were the house cleaners and the, da the dad or something's been all the work and expects that. I mean, you hear those kind mm -hmm. of cases. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's common, but that's, you yeah, it, it, it's, we like to pretend that that's something that happened in the 30s, 1930s and 1940s, right. but sadly, 2013, and we still see yep. a lot of that, where um, the dad would be, the father would be the breadwinner, and the mom would be the same home mom, and he would control how much money she can get, and that's financial abuse right there. Yeah, that is another one. I remember that. I mean, you can get, here, you get $10, but that's just not yeah, right. Exactly. And any Society, even 25 years ago, it shouldn't have happened, but it's people know about it now with the studies that have been, mm -hmm. been going on. And we up. just spent some time in Lincoln High School trying to educate the kids on healthy relationships and mm -hmm. what, what are some characteristics of a healthy relationship and what to do if you feel like you are not in a healthy relationship. Now, if a child uh, under 18, again, they can't just come to the shelter, right? If they are getting abused, they should probably see their counselor, right, at yeah, school? Yeah, definitely. And they yeah. can still call the Family Center, and we have Robin, who is a, she is the youth coordinator, spends time in school. So yeah, and to, to clarify that, um, they can come and see um, outreach services, but right. they can't just come and check themselves up into upstairs shelters. So if you, right. are there are any um, teenagers out there or, or anyone that's feeling unsafe, mm -hmm. and they can just come through the shelter and, and ask call to talk email. to you. Mm -hmm. Right, because they, you can guide mm -hmm. them wherever. And exactly. Yeah, this is is free to this them? is free of mm -hmm. charge right. and um, yeah I mean, we, whatever right. we can't do we will refer them to different agencies on the community we have a lot of partners mm -hmm. right. partner with a lot of agencies so we can connect them yeah. to but, some services right. to help them but you know a lot of your cases that do come are abuse and mm -hmm. what, what I mean there's pet abuse too we can even talk about that I mean I know you probably don't do anything about it but on the pet side maybe you do uh -huh. but I'm sure it's happened 
Yeah. We hear it. Well, what, what we see, uh, with, uh, we have a pet program, okay. and what we do with our pet program, a lot of times when the family leaves their home, um, they usually bring their pets with, and so we have what we call our pet program where it will um, put the pets in different foster homes. And we're always looking for families that would be able, to, that's willing to adopt these, um, take these, foster these pets. Okay. Well, and that's one thing sometimes that prevents women mm -hmm. from leaving or we leave leaving an abusive situation because they don't leave the pet behind so you can bring your pets and we'll find a place for them that's true yeah you don't want to leave the pet with the, the other person mm -hmm. and stuff like that so um, I don't know if it's a tips but what can you uh, say to people just to keep a lookout is there any tip that you give people that uh, that tells people hey you might be getting abused or for the people just to let them aware of it yeah, uh, sadly, one pattern that we see is that a lot of people who are victims don't know that they're victims. Okay. And um, a lot of them, will, a lot of their friends or family will tell them that, like, hey, this is not right. So listen to your family, listen to the people that you love, family mm -hmm. and friends. And if any time you feel like, hey, this is not right, um, go and talk to someone about right. it. Now, could they call the police department if they were feeling they were being actually really abused? Yes, yes, Absolutely, yes. if they if Absolutely. don't feel safe, call the police. Call, call the, the police, police department, yep. And just, even if, you, if it was something really bad, then 911 would be something that would be the call. And we work really closely with law enforcement sure. too, so um, we're a team. So a team um, to help out. And exactly. And uh, if they see some kind of a domestic abuse or something to that area that they can assist and actually take maybe uh, take some away from the house, I would assume. Exactly. Well, and if you know somebody who you feel may be sure. in an abusive situation, don't keep your mouth shut. Do you see statistically it's more it's more women than men, though? Uh, that, that's what we see, but um, that's what's reported. So right. we're actually not sure what the numbers are. Okay. But last year's number, um, we, for our outreach services, we serve um, roughly about 907 clients. And then wow. for our upstairs shelter, we had 65 women that were in shelter and 88 kids. So wow. each year the number increases. The number and um, according to um, Chief Hoyer, um, he said that every other day, officer respond to a domestic violent call and those uh -huh. are just a reported call so we're thinking of there's got to be more out there that are not reported right there's quite a bit that people just hold on and never exactly. never do say anything but you're there mm -hmm. to help out um, it's all confidential I'm sure it's all confidential and, um, and the important thing too is if you're being abused it is not your fault right. exactly. you did not do anything to deserve it it is not your fault right yeah. you know so, there's really no tip or anything. It's just give you guys a call, and I guess yeah. that's how. How does someone get a hold of you? Do they email or phone? Yeah, we are staffed 24 hours, seven days a week. So our phone number is 715-421-1511, okay. and you can get a hold of us. And there, you can do it um, via email too. So we mm -hmm. you can go on our family center website, which is family ctr.org, and um, we have confidential email mm -hmm. um, there. It's set up online where you sure. can um, to send us an email. Well, one step at a time, really, to, to help mm -hmm. tackle this abuse. And I'm sure when the people are at the shelter getting help uh, for some some reason or another, there's probably some some training and help by the staff to help get people through that, like a counseling deal. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. We don't have any train uh, any certified counselor okay. there, but we, what we do is we do talk to them and we do help them. Um, women that come into shelter, we help them um, get back on their feet. Sure. Um, help them find jobs. Help them find daycare. Um, housing. Housing. Um, and then we also go through the cycle of abuse with them and power and control wheel. So we, right. we actually um, educate them. And you connect them, them to counselors. And exactly. Right. And then for you guys to be able to do this, you, you do a lot of fundraisers to help. Right. Really help with this kind of, you know, help with abuse in our, our society. But we, we live in a small town, but it's not just for Rapids residents, right? This is Wood County. Wood, Wood County. County, yeah. And especially yeah. the sexual assault support services sure. are all of Wood County. And, and surprisingly, okay. we see people from all over the United States, um, just a couple. Sure. We see people from, we have seen people from Arizona, California, um, wow. Virginia. So it's it just There are a lot of people taking advantage of our visitation program because okay. they're in a lot of visitation yeah. programs in the state, especially ones that are free of charge. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so going back to um, we're nonprofit, right. so it's all grant funded, and that's how private we private donors um, mm -hmm. and a private donor. So right. that's why we're always. Um, but that definitely helps to hopefully exactly really 
get this issue somewhat help solved. I mean, it'll probably never be solved, yeah. and it's just one of those things. But if we can educate people, mm -hmm. that's really what it's about, like we spoke about earlier, educating uh, families, uh, little ones when they come, because that's where it starts. It starts right, in the exactly. schools. Right at kindergarten, mm -hmm. daycare, I could even say daycare, um, because kids hit, and that's mm -hmm. a form of abuse, and if they're taught not to hit, that's exactly. a good thing to start. And we are blessed here in Wisconsin Rapids. We have an awesome community. Uh, we a donations, lot a lot of support, mm -hmm. sure. and it, it's a community effort to end domestic violence because the Family Center, we cannot do it alone. So we right. rely on our partners and our the community. Volunteers. And our volunteers. Alrighty. Well, I appreciate you two coming in and helping us uh, and talking about abuse and why it's such a, it's an issue here in, in, in the world that we have. Mm -hmm. And if we can get that word out to help and uh, for people to come and see you, if, if they do have an issue, um, appreciate you coming and telling tell them about it. Okay, thanks for thanks having for us. us. Right, you're welcome. Well, that's a wrap. And thank you for watching Community Connections debut episode. A big thanks to our cable subscribers from the City of Wisconsin Rapids. If you want to be a guest on Community Connections, please contact me at tlaukes at wirapids.org or call the studio at 715-423-0441. You can always see Community Connections anytime. Just log on to wrpeg.org and click on the On Demand section to find your program. While visiting our website, you can find a weekly schedule of programs a Facebook link along with updating beatings and a lot more. So next month we'll have a new Community Connections program. So help us get the word out about our new program. Our goal here at River Cities Community Access is to provide a medium for information and promotion serving the Wisconsin Rapids community. So we'll see you next month.